I'm at the Abilities Expo in Edison, New Jersey with Karen Roy, and she is Ms. Wheelchair America. Uh, you're a very beautiful woman, Thank but you. it wasn't a beauty contest that uh, got you here. You're an advocate. Yeah, absolutely. This is about a history of advocacy. It was started by a physician in 1972 that saw women and, with disabilities and knew that they had um, a, a story to tell and wanted to give them a platform to tell it, and that's what Miss Wheelchair America is all about. Before we get into the issues that you advocate about, I think the people would like to know a little bit about your background because you were not born disabled. No, I was shot in an armed robbery when I was a student in college at LSU. I was 19 years old and went to listen to music and I was held up in the parking lot of a blues club and someone came up from behind me, took my purse, shot me in the back and it left me with a T10 complete spinal cord injury. And so since the age of 19, for the last 10 years, because you're about 29, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, I love you! No! Yeah, so I'm 50, so it's been 31 years in a chair. And how did you become an advocate? Um, I'm a social worker, so as soon as this happened, I went back to finish college and I got an undergrad in psychology and a master's in social work and decided that physical rehabilitation was where I wanted to spend my time because I felt like I could help people through the process of a new injury and kind of figuring out how to start a new life in a chair. And I've loved every minute of it. And then um, after doing social work for 20 years, I started doing advocacy on a, on a larger scale. Uh, I worked for a company and then we sell custom wheelchairs. And they enabled me to start going to Washington, D.C. and talking about wheelchair legislation and uh, Americans with Disabilities Act when things come up to, that are not good for people with disabilities. And we were talking before we started taping here that uh, the folks in Washington don't always get um, the needs of people who need some a little little assistance in mobility. Yeah, I'm, I'm a firm believer that if you can work, you should. And in order for me to be a functioning member of society and contributing member of society, paying taxes, which I love to do, sort of, um, I have to have the proper equipment. And the equipment is highly specialized. It's for a very small segment of people who are severely disabled. Um, but that, that, that this equipment comes with a price tag, the price tag up front is a lot less than you would pay for the wound that might happen if you don't have the proper cushion or the proper back on your wheelchair. So it's a process of educating our legislators about what people with severe disabilities need. Yeah, you told me something that I found a little bit shocking uh, because our cars wear out. Anything you buy can wear out and needs to be replaced, but under both Medicare in the states and Medicaid uh, nationally, if your chair goes bad, for five years yeah. you have to wait before you can get a replacement yeah so there's it's, it's a strict five-year policy so unless there's a huge change in your condition like a new diagnosis you're not qualified for getting a new chair except for every five years so um, you know tires are for me I'm extremely active I travel I've been to like 25 states as Miss Wheelchair America and for work I travel a lot airlines are pretty hard on the chair but if some major component of the chair breaks they're not going to get you another one until that five-year time period is up. So if I were the chairman or chairwoman of whatever committee it is that decides how to amend the rules, what would you be telling me right now? I would say that complex rehab and custom wheelchairs are only, it's a very, very small segment. It's a drop in the bucket financially. But if people with severe disabilities don't have the equipment they need, they end up hospitalized, which costs hundreds of thousands of dollars instead of ten thousand you know dollars so if you look at the overall larger picture and you want people with severe disabilities to be high functioning in society you have to you have to stop making cuts to the complex rehab part of, of the equation so your reign ends this summer you will you will crown your successor and then what will you do because I can see this is your passion <laughs> It is my passion, and it has been for 30 years. But wearing a sparkly thing on your head gets a lot of attention. So as a result of that, I've had a voice nationally to be able to advocate. So I, I will continue to be in D.C. and do advocacy work on behalf of people with disabilities through United Spinal Association and NCART, which is uh, the National Association for Complex Rehab. So, yeah, no, I, I, this is just the beginning for me, uh, definitely not the end. That was actually your attitude after you became sh paralyzed after being shot. Yeah, I. Um, they said I'd never walk again, and I 
I found equipment right away in the rehab that nobody really pointed out and I said, you know what, I need that electrical stem bicycle, I need that standing device because it's going to keep me healthy. Um, they're on the cusp of a lot of cures right now and who knows who will benefit from that, but if you stay healthy, you can. Now, I've never had a wound or fracture or contracture, so I got the equipment, I started working out, I went back to college, I had three children that are now all college age, and uh, no, it's, it's definitely not stopped me. I can see that. Well, thanks for doing this interview and the best of luck. And I hope that the folks in Washington, if they're seeing this or listening to this, uh, will take heat. I would really be extremely thankful. And so with this 56 million people with disabilities in this country, thank you for having me.